We've had such a yucky rainy day, then all of a sudden the sun came out and was shining through the purple leaves of this really beautiful oxalis plant or shamrock plant that I have. So I thought, well, I'll show you the blooms on these because they're so nice and pretty right now. And I will maybe share a little bit on how to care for this plant. Join me. Liquid Amber Girl Gardening. My sweet grandmother introduced me to oxalis plants many, many years ago. And so I've kept care of these um, for a long time. Uh, this one in particular though is a newer plant to me. And I just wanted to show you the plant tag here. This is a proven winner's plant. And I did just a little bit of research to make sure that there weren't any glaring differences between caring for this, um, this shamrock as opposed to others that I have and have cared for in the past. And they all seem to be pretty much the same with one very different exception. That being that uh, this plant isn't going to spread quite like most oxalis do. They can, you know, if they're in your garden and you're in the zones where they, they grow and they can kind of almost become pesky. <laughs> they can really spread quickly. Uh, this says on the Proven Winners website I looked and it says that this forms a clump that it doesn't really take off and become a problem um, or kind of thuggish in the garden. So that's interesting. They can be um, real low, like six inches. This one's taller than that. Here's my hand. Um, it gets, this is a western facing window, so it's getting afternoon light. It does have um, pretty bright light all through the day though, because there's an east window and a north window in this room as well. Um, but they're not so close. Um, that it's getting all daylight because they definitely don't want all day sunshine. This plant is considered to be a shade plant or a part shade plant. So they can handle some direct sunlight, but they definitely don't want it all day. And this one, like I said, is blooming. They describe these blooms as being pink. I don't see pink. I see white, but they are really, really sweet. I guess that one has a pinkish cast. Well, prove me wrong then, little flowers. Either way, they're really, really cute. Not terribly showy. Usually, I find if a, a plant has fantastic foliage, then the blooms aren't really what I pay attention to anyway. I like it because of these wonderful leaves and that just beautiful color, especially as they're shining through the sun. And if you've kept um, oxalis before, you know that whichever way they're facing, that's uh, whichever way the sun is facing, that's the way the leaves will be facing. So I literally turn mine around one or two times a day uh, just for the fun of watching the leaves change position and to make sure that um, if there is any growth that it doesn't get too out of control. I don't want it to be leggy. If we're talking about shamrocks or oxalis plants, we probably should talk about dormancy. And it's just a time um, that sometimes these plants go through they can go through it in the winter. Some plants like to do it after they bloom. Some of the oxalis plants like to wait until they finish their bloom and then they'll have a dormancy period, a kind of rest period. Um, they don't have to do that though. A lot of times they'll um, have their dormancy if they're feeling mistreated in any way. <laughs> so um, I don't wanna make you feel bad if your plant has gone into dormancy. It does not necessarily mean that you've done anything to um, to affect that, it's just sometimes it happens. But uh, I don't want you to throw your plant away thinking that it has died when it is definitely savable. So these plants like to be kept moist, but they always wanna have drainage. They want a chance to dry out, just not all the way. So um, you're watering, you know, you just have to use your finger. And um, I'll show you what I've done here. This is still in the original planter that I got it in and I just set it down in a basket. And the reason I did that is because these also don't really need to be up potted too much. So if you do get one, I know it's really tempting and I've definitely been there where you get something home and the first thing you wanna do is put it in one of your pots. You don't wanna have it 
in just that nursery plastic nursery pot because a lot of times they don't look good and um, so I've been trying here recently to do a lot more where I'm tucking plants in so there's the nursery pot and but you just can't really see it if you're not looking same thing here same thing here these are two um, pilias nursery pot just tucked into the basket same thing down here with this lovely little peperomia so um, until they really need to be repotted why mess with the roots and um, try, you know if you have too much soil or a pot that's too big the it's so easy to overwater and just stress out the plant so that's how I've been trying to deal with um, my house plants uh, for a while now and uh, it works really nicely for me. Let me get back on track. If you do have a plant that, that goes dormant, you just need to, if you were fertilizing, stop for sure. Cut your water back, and then if it goes, like so that there's just a few leaves left, just go ahead and snip those like an inch above the soil surface, and then stop watering it entirely. Get it into some nice bright light, um, you know a nice bright window and let it um, come back and when you start seeing some um, growth from the bulbs because this is actually these are little bulbs um, bulblets they're called because they're so small um, then you start back into your regular watering so um, these can bloom whenever they want to and it kind of just depends on if the plant has itself on a schedule or if it's just really, really happy. But as far as fertilizer goes, I say spring and summer is generally the best. And then go ahead and let it rest in, through fall and winter. Take a rest from the um, fertilizer and just use water. And even in the winter time, go ahead and cut your watering back um, to what you would normally for a, a plant that's not actively growing. If you wanted to grow this plant outdoors, you can if you are in a zone, this particular one, and there are different oxalis varieties that are um, hardy in colder areas. This one is not. This is a zone 8, what is it, 8B? Zone 8A down to zone 11B. So this likes things pretty warm, um, and I wouldn't be able to grow it here because I'm in a zone 6, so that wouldn't work. For me unless I was like during the growing season when we're not having frosts and things so um, maybe you can grow this one outside and it would be absolutely fantastic imagine this planted with like I don't know five six seven plants um, it would just be so beautiful especially with this this purpley red color in the shade it would just be absolutely fantastic. A nice alternative like to a coral bells, a hooker, you know, something like that. Um, these would be really, really nice. And lastly, I did wanna talk about um, the fact that these are considered to be poisonous for your pets and for humans. So if you have young children or if you have pets that are curious or pets that like to chew on plants, um, this one is a no-no. It uh, is generally not poisonous, like dangerously poisonous, unless a large amount is eaten. And um, on, when I was researching, I found that these are actually really bad tasting. So we have that going for us because generally if an animal or a person, a little, a, a short human person, <laughs> if a child would take a bite of this, um, it tastes pretty bitter. So they tend not to do it again. And generally um, the poison or the toxicity isn't too bad until a lot more has been ingested. So as far as this being a house plant, I think you should give it a go. It's not hard to take care of and it sure is a beautiful color to light up your room. I hope you all are having a great week. I'll see you in the next video.